everybody. I thought today that I would take a lot of the things that we have created or some of the things that we've created and make something out of them. So I thought I would make a canvas. I have actually started. I would love to know if anybody is in the chat, if everything is crystal clear for you, if you can see everything, everybody can hear me. <laughs> I hope you're all having a good Saturday morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. I took a piece of my mom's papers, and this is from, I think it's from 1964 or 59. I can't tell by the writing. Um, this was kind of like a paste of from when she worked in Paris, and I have adhered it to a canvas here. And this is going to kind of be the base of my project. Hey there, Don. Thanks for joining in. I've added a little bit of texture here, and this is just kind of something that I did a while back, and I just kind of put it to the side. I wasn't feeling it after I had done everything, and I thought with all the real cool things that we've made recently, I thought that I would kind of take some odds and ends that I've been collecting and maybe use some of the prints even that we made, like say in the last live, we created this kind of print that didn't really work out but has such beautiful texture and just depth to it and I thought that it would be kind of fun to just kind of add a few things together. Welcome everybody it's so nice to see you all hope you uh, just chime in here let me know where you are in the world and uh, what you're doing today. I'd love if you just even just grab some stuff and craft it alongside so we're gonna have some fun today. I did want to say that I did pull the, one of the prints from the last time that we got together. And let me see if I can find it really quick. Um, if not, I actually filmed it and I saved one to do today. Here's one that we did last time. Remember drawing the heart with the crayons here and then pulling all this really cool texture. So much fun this one was and then I thought that we would actually pull like when something's drying I would actually pull this print so you'd get a chance to see this one as well so let's go ahead and get just kind of dive right in here um, all right so I've got my base going and I haven't really thought the entire thing through completely but I thought that I would just kind of go with what I'm feeling at the moment. And I don't know if you all do that when you craft. Um, let's see here, my camera's a little crooked here. Let's see if I can't straighten this for you all. Just kind of grabbing odds and ends. I like to keep some of the packaging material that comes and I just tore off a sheet. You know all that crumpled paper that they put in all the boxes? Hey there, Melissa, so nice to see you. Um, and, you know, just to kind of keep things from moving, this to me is like really great paper because it's nice and thin. This is good for uh, printing. It's good for collaging. It's good for all sorts of things. And I kind of like it that I'm using something up rather than throwing it away. I also took some rice paper and I did this one day. I just kind of created lots of little odds and ends um, with uh some different um, India ink paint, uh, paint pens and just drew a bunch of marks. I, I like to use a lot of the things that kind of are just real simple, just drawing simple little lines. And this way we have a little interest to kind of put uh, in the background. Yeah, Beth, I bet cats do like all that paper and bubble wrap. Actually, they probably don't like bubble wrap, really, um, all that fun noise. So we're gonna use a little bit of that. And I did a video a little while back too of how to kind of create your own vintage papers. And this is using tea bags. And it's a really simple, I'll link it in the description. It's a real simple process. Um, to just, I actually did it with some distress inks, um, but you can also do it with walnut inks and uh, all sorts of stuff. Just kind of nice to just kind of take something and use some of the stamps that you all have in your stash. And, uh, you know, we're just able to create kind of like those spots. Or 
you know, if you are a tea drinker, maybe they're naturally stained. I'm not really a tea drinker, but I thought that this would be kind of fun to kind of use at the same time. You can see how strong that paper is. I also have um, a pasta box that I kind of just tore. I wasn't sure exactly what size embellishment I would want. So I love using um, the, this brand particularly because it's nice and it's thin, it's not super thick. I also use Barilla from time to time. And I love boxes that are white on the inside because white always works. And then I just usually cover them with a little bit of gesso. So I have that just in case I need to go bigger. And I also have a heart that I have to be honest, I'm purging my room right now. Anybody like in a cleaning mode <laughs> lately? Um, and I just kind of found this embellishment that I had done with um, some different like wow powders. Um, I don't think it was this particular one. It was a different one. And I probably mixed a few others together and just kind of created this really pretty embossed um, heart embellishment. I thought this might be cool but then it might be too small so we'll kind of see where we where we end up i've just kind of got other little scraps that i like to keep so let's just kind of get started so this is going to be a project that i would love some input in along the way also kind of drew these with my left hand i'm right-handed so i drew with my left hand uh, that was a tip that i had gotten from mixed media artist lolly mill um and I actually love the way these turned out because they look so like organic, right? And they feel, they feel really kind of, I don't know, whimsical in some sort of sense, not perfect. And when I do them with my right hand, they're a little too perfect and they feel hesitant. And this just feels so much more natural. So I had um, done a couple of these on tissue paper and I thought that we would just kind of dye those as well and uh, just kind of maybe glue them down. I'm not 100% certain, but we'll see. I love that uh, the, some people are working here, small books that uh, bring odds and ends. Yes, I love that, I love that. So let's go ahead and um, I think to start, what I'm gonna do is I have this Lindy's um, Flat Fabio Spray and this is this color. I've got a darker one. I have some black uh, somewhere over here too, but I wasn't really digging the blue that was going on um, when I was working on this. So I thought that I would start off by just kind of spritzing this and seeing if I could just kind of turn it into a little bit of a neutral and then let that dry. And while that's doing its thing, I would kind of um, pull that other uh, print. So we'll just kind of see how this works here. Just kind of looking to fix this, if you will. So let's see. I'm not really sure how this is going to work. And if it, if it doesn't, I may have to paint it white and then kind of have another go at it. So what's everybody doing today? I miss having a cat. I got to be honest. Michael's a little allergic, so he says. <laughs> I think he is. We'll choose to believe him. <laughs> we had a, I had a cat. Uh, we were kind of a package deal when we first moved in together a couple decades ago. and uh, But when Bosworth passed... Um, I haven't been able to kind of get a cat since. Let's sit here. This is not 100% working out the way I want, but it's an experiment. All right. You ever start a project and it just doesn't really go the way that you want it to go? going to have to do is we're going to have to work with some gesso and see if we can't knock it back. I would love to know what kind of things everybody's been working on lately. Have you been working on more card making, little mixed media? 
a little bit of uh, printing. Let's see here. Jesso is truly an artist's favorite friend. Just really knocking stuff back and we're going to do that on the front of this as well. And you can always mix gesso too if you want to try to mix it with some color. So it's a great way to kind of prep your surface. I always start everything with a layer of gesso. All right, so while the sides are kind of staying white, I just want to knock a little bit of this back. And I've got some great texture on here, which is good. It needed to dry kind of like overnight and then what I'm going to do is I don't want to like get rid of all this really cool writing I'm just going to come in with another um, kind of brush and see if we can't uh, pull some of that away also you know just let some of that shine through it'll probably end up getting covered but this way I'm just kind of knocking some of this color that had happened with whatever I was doing the original, the original time. And it was interesting because there was this pink right here was red and just by adding more stuff to it, it like really brightened it up. Old papers are always fascinating because the ink is always so different to me. It's a little too pink for me, so just want to kind of knock it back. But I love having some of this like grid from like the um, you know accounting paper that's there. I don't know what the technical term for that is. I want to save this nineteen this date here a little bit. Oh, that's pretty cool. I love that you're, Becky, that you are have been printing, making pages for a book. I was just kind of planning a live with a good friend of mine who is a junk journal artist and uh, just te overall textile artist. And she makes the most beautiful work, works of art. And we were planning a, a set of lives to do with you all. I just wanted to kind of introduce you to something a little new and myself as well. And uh, she does beautiful work. Her name is uh, Susan Taylor Brown. So but we were talking about doing just that. And I thought that that might be something you all, you'll have to tell me if that's something you'd be interested in and in learning different ways of maybe taking all the prints that we've accumulated. Lord knows I have a ton. And uh, just kind of creating maybe some books with them or some journals or different ways of um, creating other projects that maybe can use that up as a base. I really love this address that we have going on here. And I'm gonna cover up my mom's name a little. It's hard for me, you know, I, I, I've been wanting to create with a lot of her, my mom's papers because I have so a I have so many of them and I'm about to un, unbox uh, a couple boxes of books of hers you know like her old Bibles and these are books that go back to I'm not kidding the 30s and 40s I mean they're just so old and fragile and they're small and they're beautiful. And I, she loved art so much that I thought that it would just be kind of cool to take, you know, her history, a little bit of her, and work it into a lot of pieces. And just kind of it's that whole renewal, you know, that I've been feeling so much. Okay, this is feeling so much better now. Um, really kind of knocking a lot of this back. And I feel like I need to knock everything back. It's going to pain me to do that. But I think it's just going to be important to just kind of have that little bit of blank slate here. 
I love having the collage underneath because it's like having that kind of secret message between me and the art, you know, that you can maybe see a little bit, but you can't see all of it. But everything got so dark that I just wanted to kind of have a little bit of a fresh slate. I toyed with just coming in with a blank canvas, but then I thought, you know, I've been wanting to do something with this piece for a long time. So why not do this with a bunch of friends today? So what's everybody doing? If you're in the States, it's a holiday weekend. Got any big plans? Okay, yeah, this is good. I think what we need is a little bit more texture, right? A $2 blender from the recycling center. Wow, that's pretty cool, Dawn. You know, there's just so much cool stuff. And I don't even know, I haven't really seen any garage sales around. I would love to hit up some garage sales and find like old books and things like that. That would just be so amazing. So I think to get started, let's let this just kind of dry for a second. I like the, the sides kind of have that little antique-ish knocked back feel. So that's feeling better because they were looking a little too blue. The top still has a little bit of a darkness to it, but it's knocked back quite a bit. And I think I'm gonna need to add a little bit of paint kind of in these other areas here, just to bring the white out, I think, a little bit more. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna do this with the palette knife just to get some interesting kind of texture. I love using a palette knife on things because it's just not perfect, but at the same time, it does a really great job of spreading things um, and getting a little bit more coverage. So, Anybody get any magicals after the last live that I, <laughs> Tiffany, Karen, and I did together? I was shocked at how many magicals I actually have already. This is good. This is already feeling a little bit better. Okay. I always like to think of balance too. So you see how this kind of frames everything and then it's okay that we have a little bit more of the um, kind of like the gritty color in the middle. I was kind of inspired also by a project that I had done um, with Tiffany once uh, for my patrons and uh, just really kind of digging into like some of the distress colors. So I have them off to my side here. I'm not really sure if I'm going to work them in, but I really love hickory smoke is one of the colors that I love. And I, I can't get enough of, let's see here. I know it's here somewhere. Speckled egg. I love speckled egg. I love everything speckled egg. Can't go wrong with that, right? I wish it was rainy here. I love rainy days. Welcome to those of you that are just joining in. We're just kind of doing a little bit of a mixed media canvas today using up different parts. My goal is to use this print that didn't quite turn out, but it's going to make the best textured look. And every time I do this on a project, it's like just the right thing. So I have this one paintbrush and I don't really clean it and it ends up drying and it ends up getting like the best texture. Um, it's like one of those super, super cheap brushes from like the hardware store, Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay, like that. Need a little bit more white, I think. Yes, speckled egg and vintage photo. Yes, Melissa, vintage photo is gorgeous. And my all time favorite brown even over Catherine Pooler, um, the dark, dark brown, is ground espresso. I just love the depth of this color. Catherine Pooler has a, a deep, dark brown that I can't think of the name right off the top of my head. I should know it. Which is one of my favorites. I totally ended up getting rid of all that writing, didn't I? I knew that was going to happen. I was trying not to. 
icing on the cake. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> icing on the cake is just such a beautiful color. Um, and such a great name, too. Okay, this is good. I'm feeling, I'm feeling this a lot better. Okay, so while this dries, let's take that poll, all right? I'm really excited. I have some really sad news about my plate. I had it off to the side because I, I was trying to... I was trying to just kind of move things and get the plate out of the way. And it's pretty big, so it needs a big surface. And I was kind of like occupying my desk. And it fell down on my chair, guy, and it totally wrecked it. Is that not terrible? My plate is broken. So I've already ordered a new one. It'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> Makes me sad. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you before, that you've ever, like, damaged a plate before. Obviously, this side still works. But the, the support is not necessarily there. I'll probably keep it like that and still print with the one side. Or, or I may cut it down because you can't cut your plates. So I would do it with an X-Acto knife. So I may cut like this one here. And then that'll give me either another plate to cut from here. Or I could make it shorter. But I kind of like it because it's eight and a half inches wide. I know, Beth, right? It's like a tragedy. It's awful. Now, I got impatient and had pulled up one side and I very promptly put it down because I realized it wasn't dry and that was about 40 or 60 minutes in. So that's when I decided to wait um, to pull it with you all. So here, it, this should come up because it's been it's been a few days and a little bit of it is staying. That must, I think that was the spot that I had pulled up initially. So let's see. Now remember, this was um, actually using gel medium, and this is not working the way that I intended. I don't know why, which is interesting. Let's just pull that up. Here we go. All right, now it's coming out clean. Such a cool print. I'm loving this. Let's just go ahead and pull from here. I probably should have done this that day, but. Such a cool pattern. I love this. And it's interesting because it has texture on it. So if you remember, if you weren't with us, we actually colored these. And this is an, one that has iridescence in it. So it's got some shimmer to it uh, using some of the magicals and some gel medium. So we kind of made our own paint. And what was really cool, and I didn't mention this that day, was when I was um, applying the gel medium through the stencil, um, I was actually applying a super, super thin layer, like intentionally, but I, I was surprised that I actually didn't tell you all that um, because I wanted some of the um, pattern from behind it to come through. I didn't want it to be like some big, like caked on thing because that would have been a little too overpowering. And I'm really glad that I chose to do that because just having kind of like this, I think it was actually, a, no, this was the Bordeaux. This was like an orangish sunset kind of color. Um, it's really kind of cool. I don't know if you can see that shimmer at all with the light. It's so pretty. So pretty. And I love the green and kind of like the turquoise behind it. Uh, it turned out really, really well. Very pretty. That's going to make, these are going to make some really cool. I'm going to actually probably turn this into cards. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Very neat. Very neat. All right. Oh, thank you, Melissa. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you all enjoyed that. That was kind of cool. Okay, this is still a little, a little, I was hoping that would dry, but still a little wet. So let's just dry this. So I think from here, the first thing I'm going to do is add, um, I've got enough color into the background. I don't want to add any more. Normally I would spray a little bit, but I don't want it to get away from me. So I wanted to kind of keep a little bit of white for light. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually color some of the pieces that I'm going to layer on top. And the way these kind of work for me is I usually like to kind of pick like where my focal point is going to be. That's um, so I have to make that decision of kind of like where that line is going to be. I'm still kind of in the process of 
wanting to add a little bit more texture. So I think even though it's got, and I'm hoping that you can see this, because it's got insane texture, because I have some texture paste down. I used a little bit of um, Distress Texture Paste, and I did this on another day, because that actually needs to fully dry. So that's already down there. And then by just using the gesso and then using a brush also created some additional texture. And then using the palette knife with the acrylic paint also helped to create even more. So it's like another kind of um, organic kind of texture on top of that. And then you can kind of see the paper through it, which is really kind of cool. Um, and then you've got that color that wasn't really working for me. But then we also have the collage. So I don't know if you can tell, we've got like a straight edge right here. Most of them are torn. So that like right here also provides a little bit more interest and a little bit more texture. And these are all just like background layers that add a little bit more interest to the project itself. So let's go ahead and this is what I end up doing. I use a lot of my gel plates just as um, kind of palettes. They are, it's really convenient because that way you're not getting everything all over your uh, actual glass mat. So from here, what I wanna do is, let's add some of these into the background. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna color these a little bit. So before I do that, I'm gonna kind of test it out onto, uh, I'm gonna show you this really quick. So if I were to draw this, this is, I'm right-handed. So you could see that if I were to just kind of draw these, Right, you can see that it's because it's my dominant hand, um, it's got a very confident line. Okay, I am not left, I am not left handed, but when you go to draw with your left hand, and again, this is something I learned from Lolly Mills, Mill, and this is just this was a game changer for me because I cannot write with my left hand at all. Uh, but it felt, it feels wrong in many, many ways, but the more you start to do it, the more comfortable you kind of get with it. And the fact that it's not perfect makes it look better, believe it or not. And that's just kind of really cool. So I would, I would a hundred percent experiment with that. I sat one night when we were watching a movie and I was, had a little like lap table and I just drew these with my left hand. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of spritz. Let's try a couple different colors here. So I've got, let's see, some iced spruce. I've got some shabby shutters and let's see here. Let's try speckled, I'm not sure about speckled egg, even though I love speckled egg. Let's just kind of see. Oh, I think Shabby Shutters is going to be the color. I wanted to kind of keep it kind of muted a little bit. So that Shabby Shutters, I think, is going to be beautiful. Okay, this is going to be good. I'm excited. I'm just going to spritz here. Nothing too crazy. And then I will probably uh, cut around that a little more. I might actually do that now. Should have done that before I did that because it will be easier when it's dry to just oh. let me tear this all right because now I'm sitting here in my mind I'm thinking solid line do I want that to be a hard line do I want it to be a little bit more organic feel so thus I'm tearing all right and just kind of tearing away some of the excess now most of this color will just kind of fade into the background um, but the thing is, I don't want that to be green. So I want to see the leaves more than I do, um, you know, a bunch of green negative space. So let's go ahead and just pick that out here. So I'm curious... How many of you um, have like 
pigment powders of any kind, tonic, uh, color burst, um, brusho. I'm trying to think of who else has pigment powders. Ken Oliver, I think that's Color Burst. Um, and then of course, Magicals. And then if you have them, do you use them? <laughs> or do they just, or do they just <laughs> stay in the drawer because you don't know what to do with them beyond just like one or two things, one or two techniques? Let's see here. Feel free to answer in the chat, or also if you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments. So I'm seeing you have some, but you haven't really used them. Melissa, Beth doesn't really use them. Melissa uses them to watercolor mostly. Do you find that you reach for them, Melissa? Just out of curiosity, a lot? Or just like when you see somebody use them, does that remind you that you have them? It kind of feels to me sometimes like they're kind of like gelatos. We have them, but we kind of forget about them, right? So let's see how that looks versus this. See, and it's all that negative space that I was thinking about. Let me just quickly dry this. Thankfully it's tissue paper, so it'll dry super quick. I'll just cut away all that excess. Got all this great color here. Nice and light. I love gelatos too. It's been a while since I've used my gelatos, I'll be honest. Okay, that's nice. That's good. Okay. Let's go ahead and just tear this quickly. Anybody have any questions about anything that I can answer? Random questions. Let's see here. Don't know if you all saw all the amazing uh, mediums that Ranger just released under the distress line, Tim Holtz line. I have a whole list of things that I want. But I told myself I have to use some of the things I have before I buy more. Oh, paints are artsy infusions. I have some of those too. Rolo neon powders. I have never heard of those. Interesting. Paper Artsy makes some really great stuff. Um, I'm guessing that the infusion, your infusion powders, those are really, really pigmented. The one that I have is. I don't have a whole lot of them. Oops, I lost one of the leaves. All right. This might have been better in my head. This is really, really fragile to do, but I think it's gonna be cool once I get it down. The nice part about this is if you rip it, like I just did, it's okay, because we're gonna kind of collage it down and that's gonna go down really easy, which is nice about collage. So, okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect either, because it's gonna be something that's in the background. And if you don't like it, you just knock it back with some gesso. I do love this shabby shutter, so, all right. I may have to just do that. All right, let's go ahead and start gluing some of this down. See how this looks. I'm not quite sure. I'm a little hesitant here. We'll see. I 
adding a little bit of gel medium just to do a little collage here. And I'm gonna collage this right off the edge too. This is really pretty. So I'm gonna to wanna to add some gel medium underneath and then we'll add some on the top too. Just wanna to kinda of make sure that I can get that there. Yes, you're right, Becky. It is tough to entertain and do a demo. <laughs> I'm liking that. That actually turned out better than I expected. Okay, I'm just going to move that to the side because I want to just get this little tiny bit of excess away. All right. I'm liking the way that that looks. All right. So up top, though, I think I'm just going to have a little tiny bit. So I'm going to need to get rid of some of the excess because that's a little much. You see what I'm saying there? Charlotte, thanks for joining us. Denmark must be late there, late in the evening. So here we go. I just really wanted to do a little bit of crafting today. And Michael is thankfully for the first time busy in like two years. The travel industry is starting to pick back up, which is nice because, you know, from a business perspective, we lost everything overnight, which kind of sucked when COVID happened. <laughs> and then he's basically been working for free for two years because anytime anybody booked anything, they just ended up canceling it because they all of a sudden couldn't go. And he doesn't get paid unless people actually travel, which has been very difficult. So, so you can see that this tour, um, but I'm like on a mission to save it. So let's see here, I do that and then have it be like that, that'll work. Okay. Ah, nine at night. Well, thanks for joining the end of the day. Yes, we're trying to get to Europe also potentially at the end of the summer. And uh, yeah, more and more people are starting to starting to go to go to Europe and go different places. Michael's been mostly booking people to Mexico and uh, the Caribbean and a couple cruises, which is kind of cool. Glad that's kind of picking back up. All right, so let's grab a little bit of, I've got my little tissue paper all over the place here. Let's go ahead and grab that down. It was kind of fun. Karen was doing uh, the, we had the triple, the triple live the other day. For those of you that missed it, Karen, uh, Tamir, Tiffany Solorio and I all went, did lives back to back to back. And it was really kind of fun. And uh, YouTube just kind of pushed us, pushed everybody from one to another. Um, and Karen did a little bit of collaging with napkins, which was fun because I kind of just played along with her. Um, I didn't know what she was doing, but I figured, oh, I have lots of napkins. Let me just do this. And I really, really had fun. Um, it had been a while since I had done some collage in an art journal. And that kind of sparked this idea also today. So let's see here, this is kind of twisted. So let's get that going the right direction. There we go. All right, see, you just make it work. And I think this piece we can have here. And I'm just gonna rip the rest off. Okay. Wow, a cruise to, in China. That's one thing that I have never done, Melissa. I hope you get to take that cruise someday. 
because the Peking, I think it's on the Peking, right? That's supposed to be a beautiful, beautiful trip. Um, that would inspire a lot of um, creativity, I think, for me being in Asia and just seeing how everything else is different. So before this actually, uh, I'm going to actually use scissors and we're just going to see how it goes because I can do this faster and just chit chat with you ladies. So let's see here. I have been toying with doing a um, two lives, one on Monday, and I can't decide if I should do alcohol inks because I have been playing with kind of like a very organic kind of feel uh, with alcohol inks. It's very different from what you've seen kind of like in the card making space and um it's a lot more with the with the brush, with the um, blowing and um, using like a straw and doing a little bit of brush work. And I came really close to doing it today. Um, and I also want to do a live uh, for creating more projects uh, with leftover prints. So. That one though is gonna be long. That's my only hesitation because the last time I did that, it was almost three hours. A lot longer. But I know that you guys, you ladies all want that. Okay, here we go. I collect napkins, I love them. Having lived in Europe, Europe uses paper napkins way more than we do here in the States and they're just everywhere and I just love them. There's so many cool designs. All right. So this, I think because this is live, if it was just me, I would probably tear these, but I was struggling a little. So just wanna do it with scissors. And it'll have a little bit of a different look, but hopefully, hopefully it'll still work. If not, we'll have to cover it with something. Doodling is really a lot of fun. It's very um, relaxing. And I don't know if any of you feel like this makes you feel like you can actually uh, what was like I can actually draw because let me tell you a couple years ago I 100% could not so if you feel like you can't draw I encourage you to try the left-handed doodle because I was shocked at how good this looks <laughs> shocked absolutely shocked I actually felt like wow I could turn this into an actual stamp that's actually how I felt. <laughs> I love that you all have collected napkins. I came close to using napkins actually on this project. Okay, let's see here. Just make sure that I'm going to need this bottom piece. I am. Okay. It's looking pretty cool. So what's the temperature like where everybody is? I'm always curious about this, especially for people who are like below the equator this time of year. It's just starting to heat up here, which is making me not as happy. I like the cooler temperatures. I would have done better in the Pacific Northwest, climate-wise. I miss my pool in Florida, but I don't miss the heat. All right, here we go, we're almost done. All righty, here we go. It's almost starting to, I realized the other day that in a few days, it's going to be June, <laughs> which actually made me think of Christmas cards, believe it or not. 
of all things, that's what I, that's where my mind went. I gotta start making Christmas cards. <laughs> Okie doke. Let's go ahead and get this all. This is very, very fragile. So let's dry it a little bit. Six is cool. 75. I'm trying to think of what it is. I think it's supposed to be 80 here in North Carolina. This is still too wet. So I'm curious, Sonia, with all those napkins in storage, now I know that you're in Germany, I believe, right? Um, Do you, have you done other things beyond decoupage? Have you made like coasters or use them for backgrounds on projects? You've made cards out of them even? Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab a bunch of gel medium here. I probably could have done this with matte medium. This is probably a little thick. Here we go. Feeling like I might have to do this in two different pieces, but All right. This is too difficult to do. Let's rip this. Okay. There we go. Doesn't matter that it's ripped and it doesn't matter if it gets wrinkled because you can smooth all that out. So very easy to just piece that together. The only actual tricky part is um, your fingers will start to get really sticky. So I would definitely have like little tools that you can reach for off to the side uh, because this is like super, super thin. And I just want to make sure that I can get this to just kind of come off the edge here. I may have to add like an extra leaf or two from this. So let's, so this one leaf kind of fell off, which actually works in my favor. So because right here kind of felt like it needed something else. There we go. And I still have these also. I feel like we need another piece or two here. So let's, before I do that, cut the excess away. So it does have a little tiny bit of a different feel being cut than torn. Um, and this is just so delicate. This might not have been the smartest thing, but you live and you learn. I'll know better next time. All right, get some of that color. And let's dry this before attaching it. All right, 
go. This is definitely in an ugly duckling phase, as all art to me goes through an ugly duckling phase. I'm just going to tear these other pieces off here. And there we go. So let's add that down. All right. This is good. So I just want to come back over this now, gently, with a little bit of, I probably use matte medium, but this is just going to seal this in its place. And I used charcoal or a pit pen. It's been a while since I actually made these, so I'm not 100% certain which one was which. So you just want to be kind of careful with something that gets activated with a um, water-based product, like a pit pen, or a, not pit pen, a Stabilo All pencil, sorry. Because you don't want it to smear too much. So I'm just kind of sealing, I'm sealing everything in right now. Because this will then give me the ability to layer beyond on top. This one I think is charcoal. So I'm not going to bleed a whole lot. But you can always create your own embellishments, even for somebody who can't draw, like myself. <laughs> Ironically, I started to doodle myself hmm, probably about, I want to say 20... 2018, I think. Um, and I started by Zentangling. And that's just really a lot of patterns and repetition. And through that, I learned kind of some really simple principles of drawing. And I don't say that I can't draw anymore, you know, because of it. So I encourage you, even if you feel like you can't do something, to give something a go for a little bit. And I don't mean just like once or twice, like do it for a few months and see if maybe, you know, you are better than you think. I know a lot of people, you know, they're hesitant sometimes to even try like mixed media or try putting things on a canvas. You know, maybe if you always make cards, a canvas is just a larger card. The same principles apply when it comes to like composition or, you know, playing with different mediums and color. And the more you start to play on a smaller surface, it's actually easier to work on bigger surfaces, believe it or not. Um, I know you th might think you have to fill, fill it, but you just need bigger pieces. So that's where it comes in handy to be able to draw like this kind of stuff. Or if you don't like to necessarily draw yourself, maybe you can find a napkin that has what you, what you like or maybe you can um, find like some decals or some rub-ons or something. There's all sorts of things that you can kind of dip into. It felt like it, felt like it needed another little piece there. So kind of add in that. There we go. What do you all think so far? Does it work? Well, hello, Simon. Welcome. I'm liking this. Okay, so we need to we need to just dry this here. And that shabby shutters, I think is what it is. That was like a perfect tone because it's not like overpowering, like peeled paint or anything like that. Um, just kind of felt like the right tone. All right. So while this is still drying, I'm going to actually clean my hands with a little bit of um, hand sanitizer because I've got this glue buildup from the from the uh, um, gel medium because I'm a handsy person when I when I craft. I always have my fingers in things. 
And I find hand sanitizer works. So if you have like the high alcohol hand sanitizer that you want during COVID, then uh, we are all looking for, then it really does a great job of like picking paint off of like even a glass mat or, you know, off a gel plate, so many different things. All right, let's go. All righty. Now, originally I was going to actually, <laughs> I was going to actually uh, put a little bit of this down. I think I still might because I really was digging the blue. So I'm trying to think if I want to do it here, here, or frame maybe here might be actually a better plan. So this was one of the prints that we did the other day. Um, this uh, is obviously leaves, if you can see that. Uh, right there it didn't really quite pull up completely but that doesn't bother me like this right here will be really pretty on something but I've got all this really great kind of texture and stuff that's kind of going on and these are these little things that to me really make projects you know because you can add you can add them here on the edges and there's just so much cool stuff that you can then you can then uh add so hey there hillary welcome all right so i'm gonna just kind of tear this a little bit and the one thing that i don't want is i don't want like a lot of just blank stuff so if this has in white on it which is great that's perfect I'm looking for that and I definitely want some of this leaf texture I'm probably going to shy away from some of the orange but if you recall from the other day like this I made this with a wall anchor that is the actual texture of just pressing the wall anchor into the paint on the gel plate so see how cool that's going to be? That's going to be a nice little framed piece. And I think when we add a little bit more down here, it's going to add that little something something to this. So let's go ahead and get that down. I may actually leave some of the orange. Let me see, maybe not this orange, orange right here. We'll go kind of around that. All right. And I want this to kind of come over the edge so that it feels organic. All right, so that's perfect. So now I need something on this side and I may piece it together. I wanna have a little bit of the blue. I'm really digging the blue. So that'll be good. So let's just tear a little bit here. So I don't ever really worry when stuff doesn't really like come out perfectly because these types of prints to me are like gold. I use these on so many different types of projects. Yeah, that's great. So we'll add, leave a little bit of space there. And I want to tear this. I don't want this to be such a straight edge. Whenever you're tearing, depending on where you want that texture to be. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna to tear towards me. If you're left-handed, you'll tear from the bottom that way, and that will leave that texture right along there. If you want the texture away, then you're gonna tear away from you. Uh, but I'm gonna to tear towards me. Paper tearing is one of those things that a lot of people forget to do. It's my number one thing that I love to do with vellum. Okay, so that'll be good there. Let me just take this off there. And I'm gonna need another little piece like kind of right here. So this looks like just the perfect piece. All right. 
And you can also, you know, piece together uh, collage pieces. This is great to do with deli paper or with tissue paper or napkins as well. And don't ever feel like you just have to do it on a canvas. I think I have one of these right behind me. Um, for instance, this is a coaster that is done very much like this, just pieced together collaged deli papers. And then I did a little embossing on the edges uh, where I had like some weird funky spots and I used like a texture embossing powder there and it created this really cool coaster. So don't ever feel like you can't, um, you can't like take bits and pieces. And that's the whole point of this, of this live right here is that you can take bits and pieces, you know, tissue paper that you're doing doodles on or just leftover you know, prints that didn't work out um, and create something magical with that. All right, so now let's go ahead and you know, I'm gonna hold on to this just in case I need to. Yes, I am holding on to this. I know it seems weird. This one's nothing, but this one still has a little bit of color and stuff to it. So in case I need to add that little tiny bit to something, I have it and then I'll throw it away. I don't hoard everything. You know, it's hard to believe. Okay, so let's add a nice fair amount of gel medium here. And this is gonna go off of the side here too. So anybody have a favorite new to you product or project or something that you're playing with? Maybe you bought it or maybe you found it in your stash. I would love to know if you found it, that's for sure. <laughs> there we go, just add that there. Kind of off the edge here. And I actually am bending this all the way around here. And then I would like to have this go through the deli paper. I'm so proud of you, Melissa. Alcohol inks, yay. Me too, last February. Yes, mine sat in my stash for seven years. So I feel you, not new to you. They're fun. Alcohol inks are so much fun. Alcohol inks are way more fun than I ever realized. Um, and it's truly, if you are looking for a medium that makes you feel like an absolute artist, alcohol ink is definitely that medium. Oh, good. That makes me so happy. Melissa is saying that uh, for those of you that are watching the replay and aren't reading the chat, um, that she's held on to her alcohol inks for five years and was inspired by Tiffany showing me after seven years of holding on to mine what to do with them. She's a master at it. I went down the rabbit hole really fast with alcohol inks, way faster than with any other medium ever, um, which was fascinating to me. So let me get that down. And then I just realized that I have not torn the backside because I don't want that kind of like uh, jagged look there. So let's see if we can't tear that away. Yeah, this is real life crafting right here. You can see it's not all perfect. It's the big difference between videos and this. Videos, you get to choose what you get to see. Whereas here, it's all live. <laughs> Just seeing all the, all the mistakes and the real time and the real time it takes to actually create stuff. Um, I feel there's something really special in taking something that you started 
like this print that I'm using right now. This was a project that we started the other day, I want to say on Monday, and then finishing with it here, which is kind of cool. So I like that. So I've got this really nice kind of frame here. Now we need to balance the other side from a composition standpoint and just kind of frame the other piece. And that draws the viewer like into what's going on. So this is why I'm choosing to do this this way. So we'll just add, flip this around. And when you're working, don't be afraid to just let constantly flip your pieces around. I find that that makes it easier to work rather than forcing yourself to work in um, some area where it's just uncomfortable and it doesn't feel natural. So I'm adding extra, definitely extra gel medium here. I probably don't need this much, but... I think I went that far into the canvas here. And this is like one of those really inexpensive canvases. Um, I think I got like a pack of 10 at Hobby Lobby, you know, big box store or like your art store. They have like those inexpensive ones. If it was something that was like a commission piece or something like that, then I would probably pay more. I just want to make sure that I don't move that too much. Okay. And then let that go here. And I'm going to actually put a little more here so that I can actually wrap this and then cut the back side. I will probably and because this is a mitered edge, I'm just gonna cut there so that I can wrap it so that it doesn't have some weird little wrap. There we go. Excellent. I'm loving that. So let's take a little bit more gel medium and just make sure that this is adhered down. All right. Okay, so this has this is still drying a little bit. Let me go ahead and um, close up my matte gel too because I don't want that to dry out. So now that I have all this, I want to kind of do like that next layer. And before I add that down, I want to add a little bit of journaling, I think, to this. Just since I can't get to a sink. Colors are everybody kind of gravitating toward at the moment? We have Father's Day quickly approaching. Are you all crafting with masculine colors or are you in a springtime kind of color mode right now? Rainbows. Interesting. Anyone else? Nice. All right, I 
Let's see here. Let's go ahead and add some interest to the center here. So I'm going to use a couple different textures that I have. Let's see here. I've got some tool and this kind of like burlapy kind of material. And love the light blues with light peachy pink. Oh, that's interesting. Pink and you might want to try some gray in there with that. That would be interesting, Beth. I think for here, I just want to kind of cut this and let's pull some of these fibers out if we can to kind of make this a little more feel like it's worn. There we go. Stretched out a little. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I've got this kind of like sparkly tool, which is not usually something that I like gravitate towards, but uh, it just kind of felt, I was liking the pattern. Oh my gosh. And really looking at this actually, now that I'm looking at it, this would make an amazing stencil for a gel plate. Look at how thin and fine that mesh is. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to do that someday for sure. I get really excited over silly little things. Okay, so let's see if we can't like rough this up a little. All right, there we go. So that it's not like so perfect. And same thing here. Let's see if we can't like. There we go. And now I've got all my little hearts and things. I think I'm going to need something that's bigger because this is not going to work. So we're going to need to create one. So the way that I do this, I because hearts, hearts are kind of, I don't ever try to draw a perfect heart. Let's put it that way. So this is one that I just randomly did once. And so I'm just going to kind of trace around it. And then I'm going to trim it up to give it that um, kind of like folk art kind of feel. So you can see that this needs to be a little bit of a finer line. That needs to be a little curvier. Maybe make that in a little bit more. And let's see here. Can I go a little taller? I could probably go a little taller actually even. So maybe we'll go a little bit bigger and a little steeper that way. There we go. So I wanna have something that's got good size to it. Now, when you're cutting and you're approaching around, and this may seem obvious, but this was a game changer for me the very first time I learned this, you don't ever want to start and stop on a curve. You always want to kind of cut through the curve because otherwise you're going to have jagged edges and that's not really all that fun. So, so you just kind of get close to it and then cinch up and cut through your curve and then come back down. And I'm gonna need to trim this up, I can already tell, which is fine. Kind of has that wonky little feel at the bottom. I love being able to use something, you know, that I have already. 
So we'll just kind of trim this up. We've got a little bit of the plastic and glue from the, the pasta box window there. Kind of making it a little bit more of a straighter feel. So we need to, this one's a little bit fat here and it's okay that one side is a little skinnier than the other. There we go. Come a little bit thinner in here. There we go. All right. It's a little thick here, so we'll just, there we go. All right, now we need to gesso this. Fog is a beautiful color. Um, this is a good one too. Oh, this is London Fog by Memento. That's also a nice gray. And let's go ahead and grab my, where's my gesso brush? Lost my gesso brush. If you all can see my gesso brush, let me know. <laughs> Am I the only one that does that? <laughs> it's probably right in front of me somewhere. <laughs> you can apply gesso with literally anything. All right. All right, I am trying to decide. You guys are literally hearing me think. <laughs> Making decisions as I go. <laughs> All right, this is great. I think what I wanna do to kind of maybe find that third piece of blue and kind of bring that in here is um, take that same print because I know that there's a really big leaf part here and maybe use that as the texture on here and that would be kind of pretty and then maybe what we'll do is we'll add some um, interesting uh, embossing powder I made this embossing powder well I didn't make the powder but I took several different um, embossing powders of wow and created my own blend don't be afraid to not to do these things yourself um and i actually mixed a little bit of distress glaze in there as well um distress glaze is another really cool product so let's go ahead and throw this on here this will be re actually really cool because see it's kind of like got that heart that that leafy kind of veining and that i think is interesting so what I want to do here is, let's see here. I'm going to add some matte medium to this first. So this is going to provide a little bit of layer of adhesive, but at the same time, when I put it through the print, that will help create that seal, really gluing it not just together, but also protecting it from anything else that we're going to do to it, which I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do to it just yet. So that'll be very helpful, honestly. So I, the only thing I want to do is I want to make sure to not add this to like the edges because I have a little bit too much blue there and I don't want that to be on right there. So just kind of finding the edge of 
And I can kind of shift this around. There we go. So I have that edge right there. This one can go a little higher. And just want to make sure that this has a good little bond here. Just kind of smoothing out all the wrinkles as the print is a little wet. Whoops. Just kind of, let's see here. I'm gonna tear. I'm tearing wider than the actual heart right now because I wanna wrap it around so that it feels very smooth, a transition. And at the same time, I don't want to rip too much of this beautiful veining because uh, it's a really cool additional texture that I think I'm gonna add a little to the side, possibly, we'll see. So let's do a little bit of gel medium here along the edges. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to wrap my print around it. I wanna make sure that everything sticks to it. And I'm gonna to need to tear right here. And I wanna kinda of get that in there. So when you're going around the like the rounded parts, let me just get this little straight part down here. And I love doing this, um, just using like a pasta box for this because it makes it so easy. Just tear a simple thing, a simple straight line, okay? I can take this little bit of excess print away. And that gives me now an opportunity to kind of get that perfect kind of smooth edge. And I'm gonna do that at several points just so I can kind of get this secured down and then that on top of it. It's kind of like wrapping a present a little bit and I've got clearly too much print right here. So we'll just take some of that away, making this a little easier on ourselves. And see how sticky your hands get with this kind of stuff. And then just kind of, I don't know if that's really mitering the edges, but kind of smoothing those edges around there. So now it has that, look at how beautiful that is. I love this texture that the leaf veins have created. This is beautiful. Okay, so adding a little bit more and I need to do a little bit of tearing here so that we get that perfect little, little wrap around. I have that there and we'll get that down and then wrap this around. We'll have to add a little bit more down here because that dried. Just kind of wrapping those edges. And this is a little too much. All right. And we'll just trim that excess away from the back. And that's beautiful. I love that leaf print is just gorgeous. Now I have a little too much white on this side. So we're gonna add a little bit of that embossing powder and this is gonna be really pretty. I think we'll go a little lower, not quite centered. So we're gonna add a little bit of texture with this. I think I wanna add some gesso to this to kind of knock this back because I don't want this to be too, too overpowering. And I would like to have some sort of writing in the back. So we're gonna do a little bit of stamping as well and I think I'm going to do a little bit of writing myself so let me just seal this up really quick now I have a couple options with the heart here I could just take some more print and add like a little bit of brown to this that's something I can do remember I had saved that little tiny bit of grunge that would actually be the perfect little bit. So let's actually add that right there because it's a little too, too white. And so let's, and this just feels, this will make it feel very, very organic. And this is kind of like how I made those other collage pieces like for the, um, for the coaster that I had showed earlier. 
just really kind of taking little pieces and adding to them to create some interest. So you can see how you can just kind of create a little something without taking away from the pattern, but yet making it feel very much like this right here. So it's something that belongs. Tiffany's last name is Solorio. Becky, Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Solorio and Karen Tamir were the other two that I did it live with the other day. Both incredible mixed media artists themselves. I just want to add a little bit there and we'll go ahead and There we go. Collage is probably one of the most forgiving things that you can do. I like that. That's perfect. It needed a little something. Okay, so let's go ahead and before we do any embossing, let's just go ahead and get a nice solid layer. This is just gonna adhere everything, bond the existing layer to the cardboard that's underneath that already has the glue. There we go. All right, now we're just gonna let that dry too. Lisa, welcome. Nice to see ya. Or see your name. <laughs> and if you're watching and you haven't had a chance to jump into the chat, jump into the chat. We'd love to chat with you. All right. Just want to kind of get some of this glue off my fingers. All righty. So we have a lot going on. We've added, for those of you that are just kind of joining, we added a little bit of um, some print here, uh, some gel print, and it's got some little bit of a, it's got a little bit of a ridge here. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to kind of knock that back. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of gesso and take my brush that I know is right here somewhere in front of me that I can't see. Ah, there we go. It fell down, no wonder I couldn't see it. And I'm just gonna kind of knock some of this back with a little bit of gesso because it's got a little bit, that torn edge is sticking out to me a little bit. So I just wanna kind of make it blend in a little bit more. There we go. I'm not having that feel over here as much, but I'm still gonna do this just for kind of balance and just kind of make it feel really effortless and part of it. It's shocking to me how the papers, my mother's papers underneath that pink writing, it's still coming through. That red pen from the 60s or 50s, still coming through. It's interesting. Okay, so that's feeling a little bit, a little tiny bit more organic to me. And this is still drying. I feel like this leaf print is so pretty. And if you have anything that kind of bubbles up, just wait until it dries, see where it settles. And if it's still a bubble, you can pierce it, add a little bit of um, gel medium or matte medium and just get that back down. All right, everything feels almost dry. Let's just get that all dried. And let's go ahead and add some of that writing. I think what I'd like to do is add some simple 
kind of like scripty fonts. So I've got some great little, not this one, but I've got this, uh, this is newsprint and type and ledger script. And these are just a few that I have. And I feel like this actually feels like a good one. Um, I like the, like, either that one or this one. So we'll see. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add this with some um, archival ink into the background. You know, I don't have a, a lot of smooth surface, so we'll just kind of see how it goes. And uh, you just want to make sure that everything is fully dry before you do that. I think this one's going to be probably our best bet. This is really one that I love, too. It's just uh, got that nice, really small, super small, but kind of like newsprinty kind of type, which is like my jam. But I think this one feels a little more of a scripty feel. So I'm going to use some archival ink, but I think I want to use gray because I don't want it to be, I have a couple options here. I like the minis. So I have um, hickory smoke, black soot, and ground, uh, ground espresso. <clears throat> I think the black soot's, black soot's gonna be too dark. So we'll put that one off to the side. So I've got ground espresso, which could which could look good. The brown actually might be interesting. Um, and then I have, let's see here, hickory smoke. Vintage photo might be a little too light as far as like brown goes. So let's start with the hickory smoke. And uh, while, before I do that, let me add some uh, gesso to this right here. And I just want to kind of have this just, because it's just a little too, too burlapy, burlapy color. <laughs> Is that a color? <laughs> burlapy. So this way it just kind of makes it feel a little bit more organic with everything else. Because this obviously is white. And there, then we have that. And then we have, you know, the heart. Um, and I may need to have a bigger piece of burlap because I chose a bigger heart. Or go this way. Yeah, that actually feels a little better. Okay. I think I may want to use that wrapping paper as well. I put it down and now I can't find it. Okay. Let's go ahead and ink this up and see how we do. I'm not worried about getting this perfect um, and I'm just using the upper part at this point. And I think before I stamp this down, let me just grab a piece of tissue paper and just make sure prior to, yeah. I'm okay if I miss some spots and I'm not gonna press perfect to get this a perfect image. This is more about adding interest. So it's just about kind of knocking it here and seeing what what happens okay so i need to press a little harder perfect okay and i want to be able to see that it's writing without seeing writing if that makes any sense so now you can kind of see that it's got a little bit of something of interest there and now I'm going to want to do this a little strategically. So I'm going to want a little bit up here and a little bit down here. We're going to cover most of this part, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But this is definitely the right color. I feel like there might be a little bit of brown on my, either on the stamp or, okay, <laughs> making sure I have the right color. <laughs> A little too much right there. So we'll take some of that off. And let's just add a little bit of print there. Cool. Nice. 
So it's like you can see it without totally recognizing what it is. And then a little bit down here as well. It's funny, I haven't been doing a whole lot of stamping. Who's been who's been actually stamping and who has been like Lisa, I know you've been stamping. Who has been like making more mixed media and who has been more stamping lately? I have been like having fun creating textures and colored backgrounds, just using the things that I have, um, like, you know, leaves and other fun things. Okay, loving that, that looks good. I feel like I need a little tiny bit there. So just gonna add a little bit more and there we go, nice. Okay. Need to stand up to see this. Get a good visual here of what's going on. There's my paper that I was looking for. Okay. So we've got our little bit of tool here and a little bit of kind of like this burlap burlapy material. I'm going to want to situate this either higher, no, down here. Because I don't want it to be like perfectly somewhere. You don't want it dead center. That's not as interesting. We need that a little bit lower. We still need to do some embossing to this. And I think I may want to do something with this paper. I'm not quite sure what yet. So Let's go ahead and maybe just crinkle it a little. And then let's just add some gesso to it. Let's start with that. Let's see how that. How about we add some print, but in ground espresso. So first we're going to take all this off. And let's now add this. Because this will obviously hold the print a little bit more. Um, let's see what happens. Interesting. Let's maybe add the bottom here. That's a little different. I love that we have a gap there. So let's add a little bit here and maybe a little here. Okay. And then let's add a little tiny bit of gesso. Just kind of grunge this up, create something that's interesting. If it doesn't work out, it's just a piece of packaging from Amazon, right? No big deal. It didn't cost me anything. Amazon graciously gave me something cool to work with, which I love. This is still drying. So we have a couple layers of, couple layers of uh, gel medium on here. If you're having um, difficulty with something drying, don't forget to hit it from the back. When I do heat embossing, I always emboss from the front and back because remember paper, just like cardboard or anything else, it's made of fibers. So if it's heated fully through, um, things will actually set faster. All right, so what I'd like to do here, let's just make sure. my little pokey tool is. I have a little tiny air bubble, so I'm just going to kind of create a little cut, and that's going to help release that. Same thing on this side. And why that happens is you add your adhesive down, and you probably it probably dried before you had an opportunity to really get that down. So just want to add a little more adhesive to kind of get that in its place. Okay. 
because I don't want it to be bumpy. So a little more stamping going on, a little mixed media. I'm curious, is the mixed media going on in art journaling or in on a canvas or is it going on cards? Love to know what everybody else does. All right, this is gonna be cool. I'm enjoying this. Let's go ahead and do the embossing. So. I'm just kind of getting all my little ducks in a row here. What I'd like to do is I've got this really cool kind of texture. And when I have something like that, cause I have like this big white space right here. So I'm taking my distress embossing dabber, which hands down every single person. I don't care if you're a card maker. I don't care if you're a mixed media artist, you need this. This one product is so amazing not sponsored in any way, shape or form. Bought this myself, um, bought all my ranger supplies myself. I just kind of like to just kind of run it along here. It's just really random. And that's what I think I love about it the most. And just kind of in a couple spots, like especially where I have like, you know, some empty, you wanna be careful cause I just like ripped that of course, cause I'm live and not being, not taking my time. And you just need like a little coffee filter. So I created my own mix here. And what this is, is this is embossing fluid in here. But what's so awesome about this, and that's probably not smart. I just need to kind of activate it a little bit. It has that dauber tap that they used to have for the, um, I'm trying to think, what were they? The stains. This is like the old stain bottle. And what's cool about that is it doesn't, disperse things like perfectly, you can kind of, I don't know, get a little bit of a different feel to your powders and such. So I'm gonna just kind of knock these off and I'm gonna end up picking some of those white pieces back, but I don't, I mean, you know what, I should actually do this one piece at a time. So I'm just gonna kind of knock a little bit of this off because I don't want this to be too perfect and I don't want too much, I just want a little bit but I do want some of those white heavy pieces because that's what's gonna create that interesting kind of little white splatter, if you will, with this. They also they also have it, there is one, um, Wow has uh, one that's kind of like, um, this is the refill, the Seth After one. That's kind of like a um, nail polish, but it's, way thicker. This is much thinner of an application and that's why it's a must. Um, it's just such an effortless kind of look and I'm just knocking a little bit of this back and then I'm gonna come back with some of these bigger granules and the bigger granules, I can't think of exactly what they're called. Um, I'll have to find them on my drawer behind me. Let's see if I can do this without knocking everything over. I'm just heating up my heat gun here. Forgive me for the heat tool. Hopefully the mic will kind of like subdue it a little. Because you have these big granules, they're not going to melt. So if you come at it from the top, they're just gonna go flying off. So you gotta start underneath and kind of get everything melting a little. And so when it starts to heat set, it'll grab those white specks, All right? So I'm just adding a few there. They fly away really, really easily, kind of like glitter will. Ultra high, thank you, Melissa. So now that you can kind of see that it's starting to melt, now I'm gonna come from the top and I'm gonna come a little further away. Notice I'm not really close yet and see that even wasn't grabbed there. So now that I can get closer because it's melting and then I can go ahead and melt everything. But of course you wanna be careful because you have all this, you know, uh, what should we call it, uh, collage stuff, and you don't want everything to just come undone here. So just kind of trying to do this quickly, and that's where heating from underneath also helps, because that'll heat set that faster. And now it has that really pretty kind of mottled look 
you know? It's kind of got a speckled look to it. Notice how all the other ones had blown away on this side. That's why you gotta kind of do them piece by piece. So I'm gonna come back in here and add some of these bigger white pieces. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come at it from underneath to kind of melt the powder. And I'm not too far from it. So just kind of starting the embossing process from underneath. And then once I see some of those larger pieces kind of start to melt, then I can come at it from the top and see even a couple pieces still weren't grabbed. They hadn't grabbed on, so they flew away. But it's got enough that I can get it to stick now. And so experiment with this. Now, I went ahead and made this powder. This powder doesn't exist. Marion, if you're watching, I'd be happy to share the formula with you. <laughs> I used a lot. Marion is uh, one of the geniuses <laughs> over at WOW. Um, so what I did was I used uh, several different powders, but I did mix a little bit of Distress. Um, I think it was the Espresso or the Walnut. I'm not 100% certain. One of the... Uh, kind of stains or what's it called? Glazes. So I just kind of mixed several different powders, some ultra high being the silver and the white. And those are the big, huge granules. It's all plastic resin. That's what embossing powder is. And then I have a lot of different kind of browns in here and earthy tones to kind of create this mixture. And it just creates this really cool kind of look. And here's what it looks like on a card when you're doing it a little bit more intentional. Um, it just has a really pretty look. So don't be afraid to make your own mixtures. Um, I've done different ones in blues and other shades before as well. So I just want to kind of add those. So I've got a lot of them here. So let's see how many we can keep. I'm guessing not many, but we'll give it a go. Oh, I lost several. Maybe we'll get lucky though. I love wow embossing powders. Wow embossing powders to me, um, let me put it to you this way. Embossing powders is all that wow does. That's what they do primarily. Um, so this is a company, that's their expertise. Richard um, has been in the printing industry for, I think, decades. He knows embossing, embossing um, versus other companies where this is just a little bit of what they do and they do a little bit more. You know, this, this is their gig. Um, they're a small company out of England. They are super, super kind, nice people. I love supporting them, but not for nothing, I have an entire drawer filled with their powders and I actually use them. And look at how that actually took this to a whole nother level. I love this because it had way too much white on that side before. So now it has a little bit more interest to it. Don't be afraid to grab embossing powders to do something cool. All right. It's been a while since I've embossed. It's probably one of the first things that I learned and totally screwed up, of course. And uh, I used to burn everything. I over-embossed everything. It was so sad. So sad. All right. Here we go. I'm really kind of loving the direction that we're going here. I may actually, believe it or not, I don't know, you'll have to vote here in the in the chat. I would love to know. I'm considering knocking some of these back with gesso. What do you think? <laughs> I'm totally up for you guys helping me out here. Oh, I'm loving where this is going. I feel like this could actually add some interest too. So let's just kind of tear a little bit here. Let's start big and then we can always tear it smaller. I always make more if I need it. This is... 
light wash, no knockback. <laughs> We're torn here. <laughs> I would love your input. Love your input here. I think I want this underneath. Oh, maybe not. Maybe a little bit more but under the burlap. Yeah, this is... I'm so glad you're loving this, Dawn. What do you think, Dawn? Knock it back or not? Oh, I love that. That's perfect. It needed some, it needed more. Okay, but I think like that's a little too much. So let's see if we can't tear this a little more. A little more effortless here. And yeah, that's nice. I feel like this also needs a little bit of brown. So yeah, the leaves add a lot. I agree with you. Just kind of feathering this onto the edges here. And as we tear, we'll still need to add more to it. All right, so. This is gonna be the under part, then, the, then this one, then a little bit of the burlap, which is gonna give us some interesting texture. I like the paper, the paper was a good choice. It's kind of cool. I almost wanna put like a twig or something. I don't have, I don't have this like sealed in any way, shape or form. This is the actual, is this the right leaf? No, it's not the right leaf, but let's see here. This one's broken. This is kind of fun. Yeah, I'm feeling like this needs to be knocked back a little, a little tiny bit. Teeny tiny bit, not a lot, really little, <laughs> really little. Ah, oh, these are those moments, right? These are those moments. I feel like it's just a little too stark. And it just needs, and it's gonna need some splatter too. That's something else that we're gonna need to do. But I feel like it just needs a little something here to just kind of pull it all together, I think. <laughs> it's okay, Beth. Breathe. It's fine. It's good. I'm breathing. Trust me. I myself am like, oh, I hope this is the right move. <laughs> it's just real crafting. Real, real art creating art. <laughs> I think this is good. That was a good choice. I think that was a good choice. Yes, you can. T it's okay. You can tell me no. I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> I need a little bit more. In order for me to not go over the and overdo it, I have to only pour a little tiny bit out at a time. Otherwise, I will end up just putting too much. I'm very heavy handed. I don't know if you've noticed that over the years. So I have to just do a little at a time. And that's just my little secret for myself to hold myself back a little, a little restraint sometimes. But you know what? It never even occurred to me to add a little gesso, too, to these, like, in-between spots that really needed it because we had a little too much green there. So that's actually perfect. Oh, I'm loving this. This is good. You know, this is really kind of, this just makes me, it makes my heart happy to use things that I've had like the, and to make use like that print the other day that didn't work out that normally, you know, wouldn't really, you know, become like a big project or anything and to kind of be able to use it to frame the piece and to be able to use, you know, a little leftover tissue paper and draw something that becomes, um, you know, a part of it in this way to be able to use, 
you know, a canvas that didn't work out right. And rather than, you know, chuck it, which I wouldn't do, I, I just couldn't do with my mom's papers on there. You know, I had to make this work in some way and not for nothing, but I did this can I made that background. Oh, a good two, maybe three months ago. So it's just been kind of sitting here and, you know, this is, this is what I want you to do. You know, I want you to use the things that you have. It's not always about buying new stuff. Sure. I had one. I could have just pulled out a blank canvas and started fresh with you guys, but I just feel like this is something that we all kind of fall into, right? We end up accumulating more and more and more things and we have stuff that we haven't used. And I just, I am starting to want to become, you know, an artist that uses a lot of the things that are around me rather than always buying. Cause I feel like it's just so easy to buy all the time. So, okay, let's go ahead and, I think it's this I know for a fact is going to be here. So I think before I do anything, I need to add some splatter. So I've got this flat Fabio. It's kind of like a Lindy's splatter. And this is dark brown. So not a hundred percent certain, but let's let's just grab something to kind of okay, yes, nice and hmm. Okay, let's see. I'm not a hundred percent certain on this, so oh yeah, that works. I don't want to overdo it because it's dark but I'm doing this for contrast right here. Okay. I need this to dry before I add white because I don't want them to mix because this is water-based. So I need this to dry. Yes, you are 100% right. And also you can always add more layers. Right. Now you can see because this is water-based that it kind of expanded a little tiny bit, um, which is fine. That works. I wish it was, I wish it was drying a little tiny bit darker, if I'm being very honest, but black would have been a hundred percent the wrong way to go here. I, what I should have done was I should have done some splatter with distress ground espresso, pure, not watered down. Um, because this is gorgeous. And I unfortunately do not have ground espresso stain every time I want to get it it's sold out come on ranger get with the program I need my colors Tiffany has got me all hooked on on this distress stains <laughs> okay I'm feeling like that is dry enough so now what we need to do is we need to add white to it so actually stand up here and that is my white there we go okay and the white that I love 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 to use is the Awakely gloss spray yeah I've been trying to get the ground espresso stain for probably a good four months maybe even longer every time I go to order something it's always out and 
I don't know what the supply chain issue is with that, but that one particular color is just, it's driving me crazy. So the white, you're not going to really notice as much, but in real life, in person, you know, you will. So, and the gloss, what I love about the gloss spray is um, it's actually an acrylic paint. So what's really cool about it, I can never use it as a spray because they get clogged. Um, I can only use them immediately. And then after that, it's just, it's just too hard. Um, but because it's an acrylic paint, it sits on top of the surface rather than being soaked in, kind of like the Fabio, Flat Fabio by Lindy's, which is water-based. So um, you really get pure color. Another good, um, another good white would be like bleed proof white. That's also, uh, that's, I think it's kind of like a Copic type ink, like an India, India ink. India ink also is going to work really well um, because that's um, also not going to bleed through. Cause what's the danger with white is sitting on top of another color that that color bleeds through it. And that's going to wreck the way it's going to look. So this is crucial for white splatter. This is, so, and it's, it, honestly, it's cost effective too. Um, and it'll last a really long time. It's great to make stars if you're doing anything, you know, like with um, the universe or galaxy skies or just snow at Christmas time. It's a fabulous, fabulous product. Um, but it does take a little bit to dry also because it is acrylic based. So you just wanna make sure that you, um, you really kind of, uh, dry this. You know what would have been really great what I wish I had added was crackle in some way because I am a crackle addict. I love the look of crackle. Um, and I kind of wish that I had done a little bit of texture with some sort of a stencil somewhere. I didn't. I just added the texture paste. Um, but that's okay. We don't have to do everything all the time. Although it would be kind of cool. I could do it to come underneath this area. Well, I'm talking myself into it right now. Hmm. All right, here we go. Yes, you can also do that. Melissa, that's a great point. Um, you can also water down acrylic paint. Uh, you want to be careful not to water it too far down. Um, but that is something else you can do. I just like it. I like having it in a bottle that I can just go rather than having to mess with watering something down. But you are right. That is something you can do. And that's a great, and I did that for years before getting additional ones. You just want to make sure that you're always using something that's opaque versus transparent. Because if it's transparent, you'll see another color through it. You did? Beth, Beth, where did you find ground espresso, ground espresso distress stain? Please put that in the chat. I would love to know that. <laughs> All right. That's really great. I love the way this looks. Okay. And that has dried. So pretty. I should have split. I need to splatter this too. We can do that afterward. All right. Now comes the the order here. So remember, I don't want this to be like in the center because we don't want it to be so perfect, perfect. Um, this actually needs to be torn a little bit and then I need to do a little bit more distressing to the edges. I don't want it to look like too rectangularly. Is that a word? Um, there we go. And then look at that. I need to add, I feel like we need a little bit of brown on this. Definitely some splatters. Loving the paper. I love how the paper also just kind of feels a little organic. I think it's a little too big. So let's cut it down a little bit. Perfect there. <clears throat> And I do like having um, one side a little thicker than the other. Mm. 
needs one little thing. Needs like some twine of some kind, I think. I don't have any like right here, me. Okay, I have definitely talked myself into into adding something here. No. Nope. I think this is going to be too. on that. All right. Yeah, natural jute. I agree with you. All right. Let's see here. Hang with me here. So I have some but it's a little thicker than I want. I wish I had like a, um, this is like really old, old Stampin' Up, old Stampin' Up hemp. <laughs> hemp twine. Those of you that were with Stampin' Up, this is like back in the day when they still did these in color, right? O2. <laughs> how old this is from O2. 20 year old hemp twine. This is, yes, I am a hoarder apparently. I hope some of you are laughing at that. <laughs> well, actually this doesn't feel as thick as I thought it was. Okay. That's good. All righty. Here we go. Yes, I think this is a good choice. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to actually tie this. I just want to make sure that I've got this going in the direction that I want it to go. I love crisscrosses, but when you're crisscrossing, I personally like them to be a little kind of like off. I don't want them to look too perfect. Let's see here. I don't want it to take, I want it to add to this. I don't want it to take away. So that's, that's going to be the key for me. Um, so I need this to go higher. Like that. All right.
I'm tying a knot. Let's see if we can't get this to really just kind of stay put where it is. That works for me. Nice and at the bottom here. I just really want this to stay in place. Just kind of notch that in. It's nice and tight. Let's cut these, trim these back. Great. All right, I love that. That's the perfect little, little added thing to it. Okay. Now that we have several things, and this is really bulky, um, I'm gonna first add a little bit of edging to this because I wanna make sure that this just doesn't, you know, blend too much in, but at the same time, um, I don't wanna overdo it either. So just kind of add doing a little bit of direct to paper with the, uh, with the archival ink here. I love these little minis. If anybody wants to give me a mini, I'll take a mini over a large size any day. I love the crinkle part of it. And we're gonna use um, heavy matte gel though, because this is pretty heavy, okay? So I don't want, and I need this to stay in place. So I'm gonna take something that's a little heavier and we'll start. I just kind of wanna make sure that where everything's gonna go. Yes, um, that's a great takeaway, Beth. Beth, um, for those of you that are watching the replay, Beth said one of her takeaways from today is lots of tiny things make the biggest difference. And you're 100% correct. Little finishing things make all the difference in the world. Things like crinkling your paper, adding little edging, little spits of splatter, knocking things back, you know, adding that little tiny bit of extra um, twine. Did my thing come apart? No, it didn't. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Whew, got sidetracked there for a second. <laughs> little things like that always make the difference. Seeing that little tiny bit of tool, even the fact that it's sparkly, which, and I'm not a sparkly person, but I think you can kind of see the sparkle in the tool here. That little tiny bit of bling is interesting and it adds something different in character to the project. So you always want to kind of think of little things, you know, don't be afraid to kind of go outside your comfort zone if you want. I still have this leaf if I think that's too big. It's just not. I it we had massive storms here the other day. And um, it knocked down all these leaves, which was so interesting. Um, this actually might be kind of a cool thing to add to that. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. It kind of takes away from all that beautiful texture. And um, I feel like this is like slipping and I don't like that. This needs to stay up. I need to secure this. So the only way I'm gonna do that is with something sticky. Yes. Yeah, that tiny little bit of blue on the edge. Yep, you're right. Little little tiny things like this. Um, all right, so here I've got some super, super sticky tape. I'm gonna pull this up so that I can get it in the exact position that I want it in. And I had that notched in, but it still slipped. Okay, so now that I have it where I want it, let me grab my tape and cut a nice little piece. This is sticky tape. This is, anytime I do anything like 3D, like boxes or anything like that, this is my go-to tape. Now, the cool thing about this is I don't really necessarily need it to stick on the other side. I'm just really utilizing this to keep things in place, um, but you can. You can stick it down. I might. It's going to be a little raised, so I don't think it's going to serve any purpose for me to peel it off, but this is like my favorite tape to use when making boxes. not perfect but kind of adds to its charm still unclear on the leaf whether or not I should add it I just don't know 
I'm going back and forth a little too much. Let's see here. I have another. I pressed several the other day just to use. Um, it was kind of fun that the storm knocked so many of them down. I'm uncertain. That's not like in there, but we'll see. Okie doke. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to lift this up and just add my little bit here. Remember, I'm not necessarily going for like center, center mass. We're going to go like down here, which is kind of sad because you're not going to be able to see the rest of this leaf, but that's okay. The imagination will take you there. from under the heart, okay. Let's see. Yeah, cause I kind of, I really love the texture of the heart and I may not use a leaf at all. Um, and I may actually trim this down, not sure yet. I may actually not use the burlap. No, I like the texture. I kind of like this one because it's kind of got that greenish yellow to it. Hmm. This is what I have to do. So I'm standing right now because when I when I'm creating and I'm sitting down and I'm struggling <clears throat> and struggling in a sense of not in a bad way. It's just I'm I'm uncertain, and that's not a bad thing. That's just part of the artistic process. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, I have to sometimes shift my perspective. So I will stand. I will also walk away from the project. Yeah, that's not good enough. But let's see here. Okay, I'm going to make a decision. I love that this is kind of like, you know, the bottom third, or this top third is kind of free. Um, I don't mind that at all, actually. I like that this is all kind of like down here. So be slightly higher. There we go. Okay. I think this paper added a lot. I'm really glad that we made that decision. I'm unclear on the leaf though. Kind of. Kind of a shame that you can't see it. There we go. Maybe that might work. I 
think it's a little too much blue. And that's a little bit more natural. All right. A green sprig. I have a green one, one that's a little bit more green. Yeah, this is, um, I think the green leaf, the, Beth, thank you. The green, I think, is the right choice because it's a little bit of contrast because I think the blue was a little too much of the same and it takes away from the three blue. Um, the neutral worked, but I think this is actually the nicer choice out of the two. And I like the fact that you're kind of, seeing the green it's kind of going in the same direction but at the same time i think the thing that i like the most not that you need to know what the veining is i think you can figure it out but the fact that you've got a leaf right there just solidifies that not that that's what art is about art is about a feeling um i think this is kind of cool the only thing that bothers me is this leaf is not sealed in some way so before before I put that all down, I'm gonna put glazing medium on it just to kind of seal it in some way before adhering these. So I think I kind of know the direction I'm going. So let's just add this down because this is gonna become a mess really quick. And let's just seal that up so that it doesn't dry. Yeah, I agree. The neat, the green does tie it in really nicely. Great choice. Thank you so much, ladies. That was a huge help. So just so you know, glazing medium is something, it's also water-based, but glazing medium is something that you can also use um, to seal paper stencils. This is what I seal paper stencils with. And it's a great way whenever you have, like, let's say you use your die cuts, like your cover plates, and you create this really, really cool stencil out of like thicker cardstock, if you can, if you can cut through it, or you cut through it with like your Cricut or something like that. Um, what I would also do is uh, when you have like paper stencils, like I'm trying to think of the company, Faber-Castell uh, has great paper stencils for like, I think it's, I want to say it's like either $7.99 or $11.99. I can't remember. But you get like all these different stencils made out of like heavy, heavier paper. Not quite cardstock, but something like that. And then if you seal them with like glaze medium, you will extend the life of those so far. It's awesome. Uh, so I would encourage you to try that out. Glazing medium. And I've had this, by the way, for years. I think I bought this in like 2016 or 17. Long time. Long time. I think I was doing something for Faber Castell and they gave us like a bunch of paper stencils and I didn't want it to be like a one and done. So I researched how I could seal them to extend the life. And that's where I learned about glazing medium. A lot of really cool things. Clear acrylic spray, that's another another great thing. Yeah, you can really extend the life, and you, and granted, they're still made out of paper, but um, it will extend the life quite a ways. You just have to let them air dry, you know, for quite a while. I'm just gonna obviously heat set this because we're doing this live, um, and that's just because I want I don't want this leaf to like crumble. If any tiny little thing ever were to hit it, somebody were God for God forbid to actually touch the art, <laughs> you know, it's possible. I love that this leaf is not perfect and that it was just like just recently knocked down by a storm. So it will dry, but hopefully it'll stay green. <laughs> I just thought of that. It will dry. <laughs> Maybe the glazing medium will preserve the greenness of it a little bit. We'll see. 
worst comes to worst, it goes brown, and that'll work on the project too. <laughs> I just thought of that. Okay. Yep. That's dry already. So I'm going to just add this to a little bit of water. I don't want that to dry. You know, when you go to the airport and they have the really expensive water, well, I paid so much for that bottle at the airport because I had very few choices. <laughs> I was going to keep this bottle as long as I could and get more life out of it. It's terrible, right? You can't just throw stuff away all the time. All right. My table is a mess. Here we go. Oh, I love that. And actually, I kind of like the gla the glazing medium onto it. It had added that little bit of glossiness to it, so it almost draws your eye. Now, that's the front of it. The back side of it is a little bit more muted, so um, those that would be an option, too. But I kind of like this side, So uh, and I like the way that it's going. So I have to add some of this. Yes, you did. Melissa and I, and Lisa, I don't know if Lisa Harrell is still here. She was also on our design team. We were on a design team for Catherine Pooler together for a while. Fun fact, I was so excited about the Faber-Castell box that we had all been sent. Um, they sent us like some ridiculous amount of product uh, to create with. I was so excited. I went downstairs with several things in my hand and fell down the stairs and broke my coccyx. Yep, broke my tailbone right there. So excited about crafting supplies. Yep, true story. All right, so now I'm just going to adhere this like this. I love this. This turned out really, really cool. I do need to splatter this, and I don't necessarily want to splatter the rest, so I'm going to splatter that quickly. Now, because this has white and I'm not really sure how well this is going to okay let's see how well that splatters I'm so sure it's gonna splatter well it's not that wet don't want to add water to it though There we go. It's not doing big, it's not doing big splatters, which kind of sucks. What else are you gonna use your ink refills for, ladies, right? See how intense brown that is? Super, super intense. A little bit of white. Little finishing touches. I just want to say though, if you're doing this and you have your cell phone around, just beware because when you splatter, it goes everywhere. And this is like acrylic and it's not so easy to get off. So. This was crazy fun. There we go. Computer keyboard as well, yes. And the one thing with splatter is you just really do want to make sure that you dry it properly because if you don't and you smear it, it really doesn't look good. So that's where sequins and something else that you can put on top comes in handy. 
You can see that acrylic was just reacting to that right there. Okay, so I need you all to vote for me. Monday's live. Monday morning, by the way. Early Monday morning. Sorry for those of you on the West Coast. Um, <laughs> do we take gel prints and create projects or backgrounds? Doesn't necessarily have to be gel prints. Or do I do an alcohol ink live with the technique that I've been playing with that you guys don't usually see? It's different. It's not, it's not really how most people use uh, alcohol inks. So I'd love to know, especially if you're watching the replay as well. First off, thank you for watching all this time. Um, I would love to know what you think and uh, what you'd like to see. So here we go. I've added that. Let me get a little bit more down now. And I want to make sure that this really kind of adheres. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra here because I want to make sure that this attaches to all these different, we got a lot of layers going on here. So the one nice thing about gel medium is it dries clear. So that's a, that's a, that's a positive. If it oozes out, it's okay. It's all right. I'd rather this sticks. And because we have so many layers, that's why I have extra heavy um, gel medium here. And that's why you would have different kinds. Oh, seriously. Those little, <laughs> those little things are going to be like the end of me right here. I almost kind of want this to, it's got gel medium on it, but I almost kind of want it to cradle that part. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. It's almost like it's hugging the heart. I'm loving this. This looks really cool. Now, this needs to, hmm, it almost needs to just stay higher because otherwise there's, it's white on white and I don't like that. So it needs to stay lifted where we have this underneath it, which is cool. I like that. It's adhered to everything behind it. So there's a little bit of height. If you see that, see how there's height there. There's height here. I think I may actually add something to add support behind there, but I'll do that afterward because I have to find, I have to find those pieces um, amongst the mess that my desk is right now. Um, I am considering adding a sentiment. Um, I love adding sentiments to even art projects like this, especially when it's something, you know, that just fits. Um, this is Small Talk by uh, Tim Holtz, Ideology. Uh, you know, there are like Make a Difference or, you know, Remember the Now, you know. Uh, you know, something like that. I'm, I'm not 100% set on it, so I'll probably do it off camera. But it is something that I would emboss so that it also has a glossy look to it because I want that to be um, something that stands out as well. So like live in the moment would be a good one, you know, for this because I have a lot of like, you know, this looks like a fresh leaf. And then we have, you know, a heart that's got that pattern. It's just a little bit of, I don't know everything. Um, so I gotta, I don't want to spend too much time like trying to pick just the right sentiment, but I think that having something, I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, of course it would need to be, um, embossed and then I would probably put that like here, something like that. So that you have that beautiful thing that you can actually put on the wall that incorporated my mother's papers right? One of her actual pay stubs from when she was working in Paris. We drew, we actually drew these with our non-dominant hand to give that whimsical nature of it. Used a print that we did. We used it here on the heart. We used it just like the pieces that were like nothing to frame this. Knocked everything back. We added texture with textured paste and then even stamped, you know, kind of a, to give it that kind of old world feel. 
using recycled materials, using a little bit of um, tool here, glazing a leaf and having that cradle the heart. Um, I just love this and the several finishing touches, uh, but it's a really nice piece. Thank you so much for joining me today. I so appreciate so many of you have stayed here with the end at the end and uh, I will be back Monday morning. So looking forward to seeing all of you then if you're watching the replay, uh, be sure to, you know, click the video that's here or here, wherever that is. And uh, I'll link something that's appropriate. You know, how about glazing, glazing stencils? That's a perfect video. So looking forward to seeing everybody next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great afternoon. Bye.